That was a sample of Adrian's story. I was one small part of an amazing team at Cerebral Palsy Alliance and Workstar that created DQ. Better put the slides up there. Here we go. Uh, as Elisa shared with you, providing health professionals with an experience of working in a disability organisation is key to getting them to choose a career in the disability sector. But how do we ensure the maximum number of people get that experience so that they may choose to work in the sector? We use stories like Adrian to, Adrian's to give them the experience of working with a person with a disability. But why do we use stories? A story has the power to emotionally connect with us, engage us, and even change us. Stories provide context and they make issues real. A good story can even teach us something. The problem is, however, a well-told authentic story is usually subtle and ambiguous and allows us to draw our own conclusions. Each of you would have taken something very different away from that short clip of Adrian's. While stories may be engaging, what we take away from them and learn from them is very personal. In creating disability dynamic, we not only wanted to connect with the people through authentic stories like Adrian's, we also wanted to ensure people develop specific outcomes and learn new skills. We didn't just want them to choose to work in the disability sector because they felt good. We wanted to set, we wanted to set them up with the right foundational attitudes and capabilities for their career. To do this, we turned Adrian's story into one people could interact with. A story they could pause and read additional material, stop and reflect, interact and practice new skills, make decisions and see what the alternative outcomes would be, check their understanding before moving on, and be supported in taking actions, all the while with Adrian's story acting as the spine of that journey. Here is a sample of how we've taken Adrian's story and integrated the development of best practice into it. In this scene, Adrian's key worker and speech pathologist, who you met before, discussed the impact of a recent bowel operation on Adrian's life. The audience asked to listen and reflect on the conversation and rate Adrian's level of dependency for key skills as a way of understanding the issues Adrian faces as part of his recovery. They are then given feedback before moving on with the story. In this example, the speech pathologist and the audience observe Adrian eating and are asked to make a diagnosis. Compared to the video you saw before, I am sure you all agree that the outcomes are much more explicit. A key element is motivating people to complete the story and allowing them to measure their progress and their success. This needs to be done in a meaningful way that provides genuine feedback that will enable them to reflect and adjust their future behaviour. In creating a measurement mechanism, we wanted to provide feedback as well as motivate. To do this, we provided direct feedback on the choices that they make, measured their decisions against the core indicators of good client care that Elisa shared with you before, and we aggregated these into a total score, the disability quotient. This is used to give an overall indication of the participant's progress and provide motivation. Now that you have seen a little of what we did with Adrian's story, let's stop and look at the broader benefits of using interactive stories in our change programs. Interactive stories allow you to engage people in authentic, realistic and complex scenarios without the need to create contrived situations to make a point. The story can be subtle and the detail can be spelt out in the accompanying interactivity and words. They provide a safe environment for people to see the consequences of their decisions and engage in situations they would otherwise not be allowed to experience. You can control the message by pausing the story and deliver deeper, guide, delving deeper, guiding reflection and helping people draw explicit outcomes. We can ensure they understand the foundational messages before they move on. They're a great way of developing practical skills that are hard to communicate in the written word they provide meaningful feedback, but most importantly, they connect with people personally, making it engaging, immersive, and relevant to them, and greatly increasing the chance that your message will get through. 
People develop a deeper understanding and they are quick to take the necessary actions that will lead to success. Next I'd like to take a few minutes just to reflect on how interactive stories can be used to support change. In particular I'd like to look at implementing programs and behavioural or cultural change. Let's first look at implementing programs. There are many change models for implementing programs, but we'll take this four step model of making people aware of the change, understanding what it means for them, preparing them for the change, and acting to make the change. Telling a story on its own, such as in a television ad or a documentary, can make people aware of the change, and if you're lucky, perhaps lead to some understanding. However, by adding interactivity, uh, to the story, it can be used to connect with people and support your audience throughout the entire change process. Let's take an example of a social program, uh, like the NDIS that Elisa shared with you. Such changes have different audiences with different needs. We can interact with stories to support the personal journeys of each audience through the change. The general public not only need to be aware of the program for it to be accepted, but they also need to understand it. Interactive stories are a great way to create that understanding. They can explore the world of a disabled person in a post-NDIS world, creating empathy and an explicit understanding of the benefits. For those more critical to the program's success, such as the clients, carers and service providers, interactive stories can not only create awareness and understanding, but also support and coach them in preparing for the change and taking the necessary actions to implement it into their lives and into their organisations. Another topical example could be the NBN. Technical change can be intimidating and the lack of support is often the primary reason they fail. The support that the, this approach can be used, used to develop a deeper understanding of the economic benefits of the NBN in the community by allowing them to explore the wonders of the post-NBN world. However, if we are tr to truly realise the benefits and opportunities of broadband, industries such as healthcare, retail, education and agriculture will need to support, be supported in implementing the technologies that broadband enables. Farmers will need to be supported in implementing remote monitoring and analysis tools. Doctors will need support throughout uh, transitioning to e-health. And education institutes will need support in transitioning to the online learning environments of tomorrow. Personalised interactive stories help lower the, re the resistance to technology change and can support people as they implement technology into their lives and into their businesses. Interactive stories can also support behavioural change, allowing people to see the result and F effects of their behaviour and actions by providing a line of sight from the action to the final outcome. When providing services, it is often those a few steps removed from the front line that most impact the service being provided. For example, the quality of IT systems impact the ability of the call centre attendant to do a good job servicing their clients. But does the IT department fully appreciate the result and outcomes of their actions? Stories provide a poignant line of sight to how people behave and can significantly affect the outcome. Interactive stories can be used to show how different decisions create different outcomes and they can also be, be used to show the multiplying effect or ripple effect of our decisions. <coughs> Equally, such an approach can be used to provide the community insight into how their small actions can affect an environmental outcome. People can experiment with making different decisions such as the transportation they take to work or the building materials they choose. They can follow their decisions to conclusion seeing not only how their decisions impact the environment, but their own quality of life and that of their children. In Adrian's story, we used video as the basis of the story. Real stories were the right choice for giving people a genuine experience of working with a person with a disability. But interactive stories, uh, but interactive stories can work just as effectively using animation or a simple text uh, and image story the right choice is dependent on your audience and what you're trying to achieve. In this example, we wanted to connect with a younger audience. The employee uses a personalised animated avatar to 
put themselves directly into the customer service scenario. A similar scoring mechanism to Adrian's story shows, that, shows them the impact of their decisions on the customer experience. In this example, we have simply used some text, a text in image to tell our story. Some final thoughts. We are told that successful government needs a narrative. Successful change also needs a narrative. Using interactive stories allows you to create that narrative, engage people in a meaningful way, while still allowing you to deliver complex information and explicitly develop skills and best practices, all in a way that authentically connects with people. I encourage you to consider using interactive stories as you implement your programs, not just to communicate benefits, but as a backbone to supporting the actions people will need to take to make your change program a success. Thank you.